Hello and welcome to this Q&A video for postgrad research students at the University of Bristol. I'm Leah Martindale, your postgrad education officer at the Bristol SU and I'm introducing Mr Robert Bickers, our Associate Pro Vice Chancellor for postgrad research. Hello. Uh, yes, I'm a historian. I've been holding this role since the beginning of last academic year. And um, I obviously I work um, extensively with uh, postgraduate research students across the entire university. So um, uh, that's quite a number of you. Um, I have my own students, um, but um, I have the entire postgraduate research com community to advocate for um, and to, to work with colleagues, uh, uh, including uh, and especially, of course, the SU uh, and student reps, um, uh, to uh, enhance the environment of uh, postgraduate research at the University of Bristol. We've had a few questions sent in, so let's get started on them. Firstly, what general advice would you give to postgrad researchers? Talk, 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 talk. Uh, postgraduate research is both a solo and a collaborative exercise, and collaboration involves communication. Talk with your supervisors, talk with your postgraduate reps, talk to the SU, talk to Leah, uh, talk to me, some of you do. Uh, but you need to talk. If you don't tell us on an individual uh, basis, i.e. if you don't tell us about individual problems or if you don't tell us about what seem to be systemic problems, we're not, off, we're not always able to, uh, to second guess what those might be. So we need to hear from you um, so that we can take what actions we might need to take to support you. So talk, 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 talk. That's, that's my message. Thank you and agreed. This question has come in regarding the current COVID-19 situation that we find ourselves in. So what is the current policy on working from home? Do we have to come into campus or could we work from home if we don't want to because of health reasons and inability to use public transport or other reasons? Right now we're encouraging people to work from home where they can, if they're comfortable with that. Um, if um, if, there's, uh, uh, if their work allows them to, not everybody can. Not everybody can work at a desk. Lots of people need access to, to laboratories uh, and other practical spaces. So talk to your schools, talk to your supervisors. The university policy at the moment is to continue working from home. Um, but if you've got specific reasons, health, well-being more widely, um, you're being driven nuts because you're sort of perched on a stool in a small kitchen which you're sharing with five other people, um, you need to tell us, you need to tell your schools because you will be able to uh, make a case to have access to uh, space in which to work. Uh, this may well be within your faculty, uh, it may well be um, sort of more central space, but it is, it is available. Um, schools um, which run labs or other spaces will have been in touch about access and I know some of you are already accessing uh, laboratory spaces uh, and similar things. Uh, but uh, we would prefer you not to, uh, to come in. You don't need to feel you have to come in, but if, if you feel you need to come in, then you need to tell us. Could I start my postgrad research degree online? Yes, you can. Most work, um, most projects begin with desk-based research. You're reading, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to understand uh, where it is that your contribution is going to be. Most of that you can do uh, online or, or remotely. Um, you need to register. You can have supervisions from the start, but you need to register. If you're planning to start remotely now uh, and come in later, uh, physically you can do so but you will need to register. Uh, if you're coming from overseas there will be specific visa requirements there that you need to be aware of um, and uh, there will if you're coming with a tier 4 visa for example you will need to be here by mid-January but you can start online 
Um, you need to be comfortable as you start your research. We're, we're aware of that. We, we want you here, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we're flexible in, um, and, and we'll, we'll work with you. How significantly are the building occupancy numbers going to change once the undergraduate students return? Will there be a maintained separation between undergrads and postgrad students? We, our, building, our buildings are not designed for the level of occupancy that uh, it's now going to be possible. So we need to be mindful of that. Hence, um, the, the, the guidance to work from home if, if, if you can. Um, and that way we, we can manage numbers, manage access. Uh, a lot of work has gone on to, uh, has been going on over the, the, the summer to prepare buildings for occupancy, to prepare new modes of using uh, um, the space. And um, we'll work to, to, to get people in who need to be in, absolutely need to be in. What if a second wave happens? We've all learned a lot since the end of March, haven't we? Um, uh, we have a lot of contingency planning in place. We have a lot of experience now. Um, so um, uh, I think we know the drill. We have to be mindful and we have to abide by the law. Um, and most recently, of course, as of Monday, the new you know, rule of six. Um, so, uh, you know, as individuals uh, and as a corporate body, we need to look after each other in these ways, uh, be mindful of, 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 um, of, of the restrictions. So, I think we are, nobody was prepared for a global pandemic, it turned out. Uh, the university moved pretty rapidly, I think. I think we have learned a lot. Uh, we made some mistakes, of course we did. Uh, but I think we've ironed out most things. Um, people may disagree, in which case, tell us. Uh, but I think we'd be in a better position to support research uh, uh, if there is a second uh, big wave. Now, regarding COVID mitigations, is wearing a face mask compulsory? At the very least, it's a sign of respect and kindness to others um, in our communities and those more vulnerable, but higher risk. Um, I have one to hand all the time, in fact, at the moment. Um, we've put a lot of work in over the summer, as, um, as I've said, into making our buildings COVID secure and our learning spaces COVID secure. Um, there are national laws and regulations about wearing masks in certain s situations. And I, uh, I assume you will all be following those, putting on a mask, entering a shop and so on. Um, reusable face coverings uh, and face visors will be issued to all staff and students to use whilst, whilst on campus. And face visors will be mandatory in teaching spaces and coverings must be used in spaces where two meters distance cannot be be maintained. Okay, it's, a, it's, uh, it's respect, it's common sense, it's looking after other people, uh, it's the law, and it's part of our regulations for the coming year. So wear a mask. It's very simple. Uh, it doesn't hurt. Um, if for medical reasons um, you uh, can't wear a mask, uh, you know, um, make that clear. Okay. If someone was struggling with a lack of space or equipment, working from home, um, having only a limited access or a shared office, what support would be available? And do we know when the offices will reopen? We're, we're opening space uh, as we can, as we make it COVID secure uh, and as it's signed off space by space. It's a slow process. We've got an enormous number of rooms um, and, and you know, buildings not designed for the purposes uh, they now have. I work in a converted you know, mid-Victorian, mid-sized villa. Um, so um, we're doing what we can. Some study spaces um, such as Beacon House will be opening fairly soon indeed. Um, and there are target dates for the reopening of s some other library spaces 
uh, which are, are also imminent. Uh, if, you're, um, if you're unable to work from home, as I've said before, talk to your supervisor, find out um, who you should be speaking to in the school or the faculty to, um, to, to book access to space on campus somewhere. It may not be where you want to work, but it will be on campus. Now, how will the rights and responsibilities of postgrad researchers who teach be balanced as staff and as students? Our postgraduate researchers are in many ways staff and students. Um, many of you are, are teaching. An enormous um, part of our teaching is delivered by our postgraduate uh, researchers. Um, it's good for their career development. It's good for us. Um, uh, you know, you learn an awful lot from teaching, which helps you in your research. So that's, so that's good. Um, I am very mindful of the sometimes competing, if not conflicting, pressures uh, on time. Um, and these pressures have been increased by the, the new pressures of learning to teach online for many as well. There's lots to learn how to find the shared screen option on this platform as opposed to that platform and so on. So I am already working with colleagues. We are very mindful uh, of, the, uh, of these competing pressures. It's been exacerbated by COVID and the transition to blended learning. But uh, we, uh, we continue to look at this um, and to try and support uh, postgraduate researchers who teach uh, as as staff, as teachers, but also as students. What is the situation with interlibrary loans and ordering books? Ask a librarian. No, I mean it. I mean it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ask your library rep uh, and uh, the, 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 the library help pages and support pages will, um, will tell you who that is and keep you know, bookmark the tab on the library homepage for library restart updates. Uh, they try to keep that um, uh, as updated as they can. And in fact, yesterday we found that they were in fact, you know, hadn't updated it. They were ahead of themselves, as it were. So that will tell you uh, what facilities are now starting to be uh, provided again. So, you know, you can click and collect. Uh, interlibrary loans will be starting again soon uh, because the British Library has, uh, has reopened and is restarting its interlibrary loan service. If you're having problems, um, if books are your thing and the library doesn't have it, talk to your library rep. Uh, they'll, do what they, they'll do what they can. Okay, so in fact, no point asking me that question. Ask a librarian. Speaking of our libraries, will libraries and study spaces be open for use this year? They will be. They're starting to reopen. Beacon House will be um, opening soon, as I've said. Um, much lower capacity, bookable spaces to enable um, track and trace, for example. So keep an eye on that library restart pages um, and that will tell you. Will there be any easing or reduction in fees? No, our fees are set annually and take into account not only sort of the national and international competitive landscape, but also the cost of delivering postgraduate research training uh, to uh, what we aspire to, the highest international standards. Um, across the last few months, I have never seen people work harder to support the postgraduate research community at the University of Bristol. And I think we work pretty hard to do, to do so. As, um, it may not always feel like it, but there's a tremendous amount which does go on behind, behind the scenes. And I hope that my very sort of periodic messages to the postgraduate research committee uh, community have, have made that very clear. So now I'm afraid there are no immediate plans to reduce our PGR tuition fees. Um, and we're continuing to invest in postgraduate research at the university. Uh, one thing I can remind you of is that if you've had a COVID-19 related extension that's required, 
uh, we are we took a decision in April not to charge any fees for COVID-19 uh, extensions and if you're um, uh, in what seem to be sort of um, uh, financial problems talk to us talk to the student funding office talk to them about what options might be don't suffer don't allow problems to build up speaking of extensions will there be any economic support if someone's sponsors decided not to extend their scholarship for instance the ukri or international students well, students funded by UKRI will know that um, certainly there was a, um, uh, an initiative to fund up to six months um, uh, funded extension, and that's stipend extension for uh, finalists as they, uh, they uh, defined them. And the UKRI is looking at what support might be necessary for students earlier in their, um, their academic careers. Some overseas funding agencies may be similarly um, able to, uh, to react in that positive way. I was talking to a grant making body only yesterday, uh, forwarding a, a request for a, an extension and the reply began, we are now so used and well set up to facilitating extensions um, that your request, Robert, comes as no surprise. Um, so, but our key advice is uh, to try and maintain progress with your work where you can. To talk with your supervisor, to talk with your peers and others about mitigations you can make. Um, you might need to change your plans um, and adapt to the current situation. And of course, research uh, very often involves having to make all sorts of unanticipated changes. I flew to Shanghai for six weeks very early in my postgraduate career to access an archive. Uh, I went in, they said, how nice to see you, took my photograph. We welcome foreign guests, sign the register, here's your card. No, you can't see anything, nothing, absolutely nothing. And I thought I'd prepared the, um, the trip very effectively. I'd been communicating with them, um, uh, but something went wrong. So. If it doesn't go wrong in one sense, it's not really research. <laughs> Obviously, I, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to be flippant. Um, and these are real problems you're facing. Um, and it may seem um, insurmountable. So talk to your supervisor, be prepared to change, be prepared to adapt. Another key thing to remember though, is um, that we have now introduced um, uh, what we call an, a COVID-19 mitigation statement process. So uh, you can uh, uh, append a, a statement to uh, a, a dissertation that's being submitted from the 1st of September this year onwards uh, until further notice, which explains how your work was practically impaired. For example, you may have been wanting to run uh, uh, 20 experiments, but you can only do 10, you've timed out, you have less data. So you can present that. Uh, ultimately, we, we are unable and you would not wish us to compromise the quality of the research here. Uh, but uh, quantity isn't quality. And the mitigation statement uh, uh, enables you to say, this is what I did. Uh, it's not as much as would normally be the case. Uh, and the examiners will be required to take that into account. Now, will there be any support for applying for visa extensions? Talk, talk, talk. Talk to the student visa office um, about what's needed. Uh, one thing you will be aware of if you hold a, um, a, a visa, you're an international student, is that the, uh, the Home Office did uh, relax some of the uh, the guidance around around visas. So student visa services uh, continues to support students with any student visa extension uh, queries or requests at all. So talk to them. Um, I can't talk to you about visas. They can and they will and they'll be as helpful um, as they, they can be. They've got dedicated web pages with, web pages with information uh, about visa requirements and you can use the online form to get in touch with them. Okay, so uh, 
talk early and talk often. Now, we've definitely touched on this one, but what's the current situation with extensions and disruptions from COVID-19? So we'll encourage you, we continue to encourage you to try and make progress against your planned timetable. Uh, we've all had a big interruption, but we all want to, you know, get on with our lives and our plans and, uh, and our careers. Um, so we are minded to look favourably on COVID-19 extension requests. I know it sounds like jargon, but what it means is that um, we're being flexible and pragmatic and supportive. And we recognise that the, uh, the enormous um, shock we've, we've all had um, and the, the, the range of ways in which uh, your lives and the lives of those you love and know uh, have been affected, okay? Um, so we will look very positively. Um, uh, and um, if you need an extension, we'll work with you to make sure that you get it, okay? Um, and, uh, but as I've said, where you can, plow on. You know, and talk, 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 talk. Again, I'm boring on this score, uh, but talk with those who can help you um, come up with decisions about how to take your work forward. As we draw this to a close, Robert, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Talk, 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 talk to me. Um, nothing uh, in particular. I think one thing to bear in mind is that I do talk to to you and I talk to the reps so um, and uh, I think it might I think we both agree that PGRs are less uh, less used to talking to the SU and working with the SU but the SU is embedded in the way that the university uh, management uh, and, and leadership um, supports the student body so please make use of your reps um, become a rep um, and, you know, work on all those ways that you can support each other um, and find support for, for yourself. The, um, a, 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 a more prosaic um, version of my answers uh, will be available on our Advice of PGRs pages under, under the current students section of the, the university website. So you can go there if, um, if I've been speaking too quickly. Uh, for example, um, but if you've got other queries, do get in touch with the, the Student Info Point and Wellbeing Access Online, for example, uh, and other information points from your schools, your supervisors, your school PGR directors, and your reps. As Robert said, the student reps that we have and everyone at the SU are here to listen to your concerns. Please make sure you get involved and talk to your faculty and course rep. As Robert said, some of our elections are opening in October, so if you feel like this is somewhere you can make some change, then please do nominate yourself and stand for election. If you'd like to find out more about how your education will be run or how to access your education, always feel free to talk to us. Thank you to all of the students who sent in their questions, to Robert for his time in answering them, to Paul for our lovely British Sign Language interpretation, and for the Bristol Doctoral College for enabling all of this to happen. And I hope that everyone has a lovely day. <laughs>